Welcome everybody. It's been a while since I did an educational Smurf game. Today, I'm going to try something different. I've had a lot of people, whenever I'm playing carry, basically tell me, you know, you're basically just a high AK, 9K player laning against a bunch of low MMR players, and you get off to this unrealistic start that I could never get off to. So this is what we're going to try. I don't know how it's going to work. Uh, I'm curious. I really don't know, guys. But I am going to basically be as 3k as I possibly can for the first like seven minutes okay so my goal is to have the get, have the lane go about even maybe a little bit bad for me and I'm not gonna like feed or anything I'll just like purposely miss 10 15 CS not creep aggro as often as I should um, that kind of stuff so that's what I'm gonna try to do so just note that the early game, I am purposely not playing well. My goal is to be not off to the start that I normally get in these games. This is a 3.6k account. My goal will be to be 3k for the first 7 to 8 minutes of the game. And then I will play normally for the rest of the game to show you what needs to be done. Uh, not quite hitting your timings and uh, basically not snowballing the carry games like I have in the past. So, you know, the first jug game you guys saw, I was just like... 5,000 net worth ahead of their carry at 18, 19 minutes in, and that makes it kind of unfair. So we're going to try to give you guys a more realistic portrayal of what you can do past the landing stage when you're not like as far ahead as I was. Banana slam jam. So the goal of this game is to teach you guys how to play when the game's not perfect or when you're behind. We're going to be looking to dodge fights when we don't want to fight. We're going to be looking to force them to separate when we don't want to fight. We'll be looking to capitalize on our power spikes. So we're just going to be talking through our mindset on how to get that stuff done properly rather than like solo carrying the shit out of the game because we're super far ahead. We're going to try to make the game last long enough so that we can get the items we need to win. I will say ahead of time that I think if you play the laning stage improperly as a carry, that a lot of times your ability to solo carry is, it dwindles quite heavily. So I'm prepared to lose this game if I can't have a good landing stage, but that's fine. Like I said, I'm purposely not going to have a good landing stage. Uh, I want to emphasize to all of you guys out there that your control of the game is starts from minute zero, and that comes from the carry roll, hitting your timings faster, pressuring the map faster, getting your item timings all that kind of stuff faster. Uh, it just matters a lot to solo carry in the game. So we're gonna be talking about a lot of things that I think you could do when you have a rough lane, because even I myself in my games will have rough lanes. And the goal of this is to teach you guys how to play in that spot. But um, in games like this, uh, it is not guaranteed for me to win, even if I play like a 9K past seven, eight minutes. So uh, just keep that in mind. I'm fully prepared to lose this game. I don't think I will, but it's definitely above the percent that I would have if I played the lane properly. Uh, Wraith King's the hero I chose to do for this patch. He's very strong. I thought he was originally very strong. He's been nerfed like three times. I thought he, like, I, I originally thought the nerfs were enough. But the fact is, the hero is just very reliable in lane. He applies a lot of pressure on the map while he's farming, which is very unique to, like, not very many carries do this. He's able to take towers if left undealt with. It's a big difference between Wraith King now and Wraith King in the past. Uh, because of his crit, he gets good CS. Because of his skeletons, he can jungle. He can also pressure towers. He's reliable for his timings. His ultimate makes it so he scales very well. Uh, yeah, the hero just has really nice power spikes. The upgraded blinks make him more viable item builds. Uh, he can go, like, the physical damage route. A lot of times you want to go for the radiance, and that's what we'll be doing in this game, unless... I just can't, based on the enemy heroes. Like, I just have to go for the physical damage. Say they have, like, an anti-mage. Uh, like, the norm for Wraith King right now is, like, Phase, Glove of Haste, Radiance. And then from there, uh, there's, like, a couple different options. I've seen Sanj and Yasha. I've seen, uh, you know, straight into AC. I've seen uh, BKB, Blade Mails, Halberds, Manta, if it's, like, a crazy good Manta game. Um, yeah. So there's a lot of different items to go after the Radiance, and we'll kind of talk about which one I choose in the game I'm playing. We'll ban out Timbersaw. He's probably the most annoying offlaner to deal with as a Wraith King. So since Wraith King has pretty continuous sustain, I think the main issue is him not being able to walk up to creeps in order to use that sustain. So I almost always go salve. Not always. Like, if my support has one, I'll consider not buying a salve. But uh, it feels really nice as, like, a backup plan at any point in the lane. 
I feel like the worst thing that can happen is him being 300 health, not being able to walk up, and then you're like, this is super awkward. So the salve's really nice. And then from there, I'll either go like Ring of Protection with two branches, or sorry, a branch, and then, or like Gauntlet of Strength and two branches, something like this. Kind of depending on the lane matchup. We'll see what we get. Like I said, though, I'm going to kind of purposely miss like 5 to 10 CS in the first five or so minutes. I'm going to purposely play like kind of mediocrely so I don't have a great start. It's going to be weird, but we'll try to get in the habit of it. Uh, we're against Underlord. Pretty decent hero against Wraith King. Since he does have high damage, we'll do this uh, to try to counteract his damage. The lane's going to be pushed into our tower a lot. Normally, we'd want to like block the big camp or contest the big camp a lot. But I'm going to act like I don't know these things. So I won't say anything, and I also won't play to contest. Uh, a lot of defensive creep aggro would be good against Underlord because of how high his base damage is, and I don't really want to trade with him early. Wraith King's, like, level 1 through 3 is pretty weak, but once he gets, like, level 5 with a few points up in his sustain, he trades really well, and he's really hard to bully out of lane. So usually with Wraith King, I like to, tra tra like to play ultra-passively. Until I get to that point. When I say ultra passively, I'm playing mainly defensive with occasionally looking for stun aggression plays. But uh, in this game, I'm obviously going to play like over defensive and then I'm going to get less CS, all that kind of stuff. So we'll miss a few under tower intentionally, just so people know, purposely doing that. Uh, we are the frontliner for our team. We have Night Stalker for Vision, but we're the guy that likes to show on creep waves. So, uh, like I said, first seven minutes playing like a potato. After that, we'll play, you know, legit. I like to have all my small items in my in my shop here. I think it's a really big thing for carry players or just any role, honestly. I think it's like a travesty that people don't have this stuff. So if you're like looking to play heroes more efficiently, I think having all of your options over here is really good. So if I'm on a new account or whatever, I'll try to get this shit done. Spam taunt, that's very important. Get rid of this. I'm not gonna... I, I might purposely die once. We'll see. Against Spectre, we'll strongly consider Silver Edge. Probably go Silver Edge since we're against Underlord and Spectre. Maybe we just walk up to this rune and die. What do you guys think? They're just gonna let me have it or what? Hey man, that's about the 3k experience. You walk up, 50% of the time you die, 50% of the time you get it for free. I actually have an Enigma 5, I didn't realize that. So Lane's going to push into my tower a lot, which is nice. Normally I would want to counteract that by trying to push out the lane as often as I possibly can. But since I'm effectively a 3k player for the first 7 minutes, I'm not going to do that. It's important to think what your support's impact has on the lane. I'm queue up a bracer. Oops. He has his passive on Underlord with defensively creep aggro. Oops. Uh, Enigma's denying more creeps. Defensively creep aggroing here. Taking some extra right click damage from Rubik for no reason. Just trying to be like a 3k player. Gonna walk up late to the creep, let him deny it. Very cool. Gonna defensively aggro, but... Uh, uh, okay, I faked them out. They thought I was gonna miss that one. Gonna back off and salve, because I took so much extra damage for no reason. GG. We'll get this one. Cap up. We took a point of stun, usually you want to use it to like help secure range. Might have even just been better to to uh not and just take life still. Oh no, I accidentally messed up creep aggro there and they're gonna have to deny it. Okay. So you can stun for the range here. Oh he's creep aggroing, what the fuck? What has happened? Okay, we're out of regen now. Oh no, we forgot to account for the fact that we needed more regen in this lane because we popped our salve early. Guess I'm just gonna end up dying over the course of the next minute or two. Oh no, he's right clicking me. I'll right click him back. I think I could do this. Oh no, he's trading with me efficiently. Fuck. Guess I'm low now. Oh no! No, no, no! 
Okay. Lane's pushing into my tower. I'm sure I'm fine. I'm fine. Oh, he's gonna give me a tango? Dope. Uh, we'll go for... some tangos. Like I said, guys, we're pepegging the first few minutes. Oh no, the lane's being pulled into the big camp? I would have never predicted that would happen in this one. I'll walk over here and contest it a little bit. Nah, uh, BSJ, I was a little too high-skilled. You don't want to do that. My bad, my bad. It's not time yet. I'm going to defensively creep aggro a bit. Oh. I'm going to keep defensively creep aggroing, but we're not going to know what we're doing, so we're going to walk up a bit close and take extra damage from that Underlord thing. We're gonna keep taking damage so we don't realize how much we're taking. We hope we don't know really lifted. Oh no, we're super low health again. GG. We're actually out leveling him because we have Enigma. I'm gonna play super far back. Maybe we just walk up for these creeps and get nuked down. Hmm. Oh no, no! I never predicted this! Okay, now we'll start playing seriously. So, we're having a bit of a rough lane. We want extra regen, maybe a little bit of mana to spam our shit. Stick isn't really good this game because their only mana drain is Lion. So we're going to start trying to push out the lane, dodge this Underlord. We're going to stun him. Get this creep. Walk over to the big camp. Summon some Skellies because he doesn't have his thing. I want to get out of here as soon as possible. Thank you, Skellies, for getting that last hit when I didn't. Just playing away from Underlord because his hero is quite good against ours. And, uh, deny our skeleton ease. Skeletons are going to take care of that big creep for us. Keep dodging him. Keep dodging him here. I'm gonna go for the Glove of Haste. It's very efficient on Wraith King. Just keep dodging, but keep right-clicking the creeps, because he's gonna shove it into us. And it also benefits us to right-click a lot, obviously, because we have lifesteal. Okay, Rubik pulled it looks like, so we know he's here. Gonna back off to the left. Looks like we're still out leveling because we had Enigma, even though we had a stupid death. So in this case, can't really contest the lane fairly, but if we see the creeps here, we know that they're gonna have to back off on one of them. So we're just gonna do this. Walk over and take the big camp because we know they have to back off. If they didn't back off, they'd just be missing and I'd be happy to, you know, uh, let them miss all the creeps. So, Underlord's dealing with our skeletons. One of the best parts about Wraith King is your skeletons are super annoying and you can use them as a distraction for yourself and uh, clear the wave as fast as possible. We don't want to be here. We are a uh, efficient jungling, rotating hero. going to buy some phase boots. We're going to back off. We're level 6. We're chilling. We're going to hold our skill point because we don't always want to level our ultimate if we're going to die twice anyways. Watching the creep wave to see if it's pushing into our tower. Because we're in defense tower mode rather than aggressive mode you see in a lot of my games. And check mid lane. Looks like our mid laner won. I'm going to walk back over here. Just in time to defend the tower. We're going to queue up our phase boots. We'll drag the creeps to us. We're going to attack them as much as possible to de-push. Our Enigma was nice enough to come back and kill the Catapult. What a nice guy. Looks like top lane's going decently. And, okay. We're going to wait for him to use his Q. Otherwise, we're not going to use our W because his Q kills our W. Quite simple. I'm going to go ahead and put a second point in my crit here. I'm faking my lock because I know he knows I want that CS. Force him to use his Q if possible so that we can use our W. Nice. Back away from his Q. To the side of it. Oh, the Enigma's here. Now we use our W. Gotta be a bit careful. Because uh, we didn't level our ultimate. Notice how we're forcing him away. This is the power of Wraith King right here. Notice how we waited for him to use his skill that was good against our skill. Power of Wraith King. 
push the lane as fast as possible, get the fuck out. Oh, they killed the big... If you can kill that sentry, it'd be appreciated. We're literally getting griefed by our support here. It's actually a big deal. Hey, you know what? 3k experience is authentic. Looking at mid lane. Got our phase boots online. We're just checking the map since all we're doing is hitting some neutrals. We're going to go ahead and walk back to lane real quick. Seems like Void Spirit's not rotating. We also could level our ult if we need to. Those are, we're kind of just ignoring him. We don't really do much to this guy. We can stun him a little bit. Trade him here. And just back off. Drag the creeps away from our creeps, so he has to go back. Notice how we create an obligation for him, so he fucks off. Very cool. Give ourselves some extra life steal. This is how you play the dodge game against a hero that you don't want to lane against. Go ahead and go for that armlet. Now we gotta retreat to this camp because we got griefed by our enigma. We're gonna keep our eyes on this creep wave. If he keeps pushing it, we're gonna go back immediately. But since he's denying, we're just gonna play for ourselves. This Underlord's supposed to push the lane, but he's not. And honestly, because our big camp is blocked, it's not efficient for us to be bottom, so I'm just gonna go top. Okay, so now we can say, okay, this lion shouldn't be allowed to defend, so let's go ahead and go fuck with that guy. It's a nice item for us for the time being. Yeah, I can't understand these trees, okay. Stun him so the creeps go, the skeletons go to him. Get him, skellies. I'm just gonna apply a lot of tower pressure here. We see our Night Stalker chasing the Spectre away. This is the nice part about Wraith King. There's only one hero on their team that deals with me. That's the Underlord, so unless he's here, I'll pressure the tower. The Underlord is supposed to defend this tower, but he's just gonna let it die. So that's really nice. Really easy tower, really efficient. Yeah, we're just gonna kill the tower. Thinking about the condition for which stops you from killing the tower. And then you stay there unless that condition is met. Oops. We have 30 seconds left on the minute, so we should be able to clear both these camps. That are nearby. Gonna summon our skellies so we can finish them in time. Skeletons will then finish that camp off. You want to stay minimum amount of time that it takes to finish the camp. We're gonna go ahead and max out our crit. We're not getting ganked at all. Spectre's level six. We're gonna back off here. Stack this camp. And since we have all the time in the world to farm that the next minute, we'll walk back to lane and pressure the Spectre a little bit. Give him a good old stun of Ruski. Uh, uh. Oh, forced a reaction. Time to back off. That's called power farming, boys. Our Enigma's taking our stack. So nice of him to do that for us. Seeing what's going on mid here. Looks like our mid laner's crushing it, which isn't the best for this gameplay. Meaning it's going to make the game easier than it has to be. Why is it that every time I queue Smurf, my other two lanes will win? May play another one after this for the sake of trying to get a game where I'm losing. Yeah, this isn't exactly a game where we're losing, huh? I mean, I tried. Fuck. I go for the Radiance afterwards. I check our neutral items. Yeah, none of them are good for me, sadly. We didn't level our ultimate, so we're going to keep playing top. Okay, we have it now. We're watching mid lane. We'll defend it if need be. SF feeding makes the game a little bit more interesting. We're going to defend our mid tower. Thirty-seven seconds, so we know we have time to farm the small camp and start the ancients. 
be wary if we need to defend mid. We're going to summon our skeletons now, give a quick crit just for the efficiency, and then run over here. We're actually going to stun this camp, so the skeletons go there. But then we're going to farm. Oh, they didn't. That's not close enough. I actually don't know the radius on that well enough. I get a couple stacks off here. Might have failed them both. Tried to get. Okay, got one stack off. That's good. Skeletons are clearing mid for us, so that's okay. Checking out the other lanes. Night Stalker has ultimate, but we don't have TP. We'll go and level our 15 attack speed since we'll definitely get level 11. Mid tower is going down to the skellies. This is just one of the awesome parts about Wraith King, man. You don't have to do anything really. You just have to push your skeletons down a lane, and it forces so much reaction from the opponent team. So our AA is farming top. We'll gladly yoink him because he's a support. No. <laughs> what is that? <laughs> it is literally a what? He's not joking, guys. He's actually not joking. So we're going to run back to the top half of the map. Notice how our mid laner is taking over mid. The only reason why we really went mid is because uh, nobody else was doing it. We're going to go back to pressuring pop. Everyone's missing, so we're going to back off a bit here. My entire team likes to farm, so we're going to have less gold than we should have. But we have ult. We'll be a bit safe. We'll walk this way rather than up that other hill. Okay, they're all smoked. AA just gang tanking it up here. Uh, Spectre's around. We just have to be content not farming because our Nigma is playing like a one position. So, kind of just how it goes. I'm actually going to TP to farm these Ancients. It's a situation where we didn't know where they were. And if we TP back to our side of the map, then we might just get stuck in base. But since we saw all of them, we can now TP back to our own side of the map. I'm going to go ahead and uh, summon my skellies here. Help me clear this ancient stack. Notice how I was inefficient, but uh, like I didn't have stuff to farm. But since I went back and stacked, I have like a lot more time to farm stuff with limited space. Focus on stacking a lot when it feels like your teammates are yoinking your farm. Um, it's the only way to like theoretically create more farm in a small area. I mean, Jesus Christ. But that's life. This guy saw me die once in lane, and he says he wants to carry the game. So we're going to walk at the Spectre again. He's got Blade Mill. He's not really a threat to us, so we don't mind running at him here. And he's in front of the only farm on the map, so just give him a quick dicking here. Okay. Worked out better than I thought. Make sure Enigma cleans up the farm and carries the game. Oh my god, this guy's outplaying me. Okay. Seems like the map's fine. Not panicking. Getting a little griefed, but that's okay. We're not going to have the perfect farm. Now we run at this guy. Send our skeletons on him while we hit the wave. Just because he's a gank threat to us, we want him to fuck off. So just let our skeletons push him away. We can now walk up here since the skeletons are bullying the lion. We see Spectre bottom, Void Spirit mid. Okay, Rubik's top now. We're gonna have to back off soon. Notice how we're like dragging these creeps to the left, trying to be a bit more defensive. We're running away from the heroes that are gonna set up the gank on us. Our radiance is definitely delayed due to the bad start, but also the. Honestly, the Enigma is griefing us more than the bad start. So we're stuck playing more aggressively on the map of Enigma. He's literally playing the farming patterns that I should be having. Okay. And these skeletons will clean that up for us. Skeletons will most likely go mid because they're going to see that creep wave. Nice. That's good. Setting them up to pressure waves is always good if possible. Gonna cleanly intercept this creep wave on our way to the top lane. Notice how we're clearing two lanes at once. This guy's being a douche. Looks like he's maxing mana drain. 
I don't really worry about making sure I get the last hits to get my skeletons back. It's more so about playing the map efficiently than it is to um, get all the skeletons. Okay, full whip's not bad. I mean, none of these items are good, but it's better than that. Okay, Underlord's pushing out top. He's got an Atos, so we gotta be a bit concerned about him. Mid lane's not pushing in, so we don't have to respond to that. Just gonna keep playing top. Lion's backing off. Got ourselves a whip to whip ourselves with. That feels pretty good. See Void Spirit going for top rune. He's got an arcane rune. Okay. Gonna summon some skellies. Some of them can go to lane, some of them can join us. We see Rubik coming towards us. Don't feel like a support would do that alone. So we're trying to run away. Hmm. Maybe we're actually caught here. I think was gonna help me, right? This is the power of Wraith King right here, boys. And by that I mean feed it. Got a little bit caught out of position there. Looks like I was a bit too far forward with my farming patterns. We'll have to be a bit chiller here. We did get bottom tower in the meantime though, so it's not all that bad. But uh, a bit of an overextension from us there. Didn't respect the opponent's catch from the Atos enough. The enemy's bottom tower. Uh, Dragon Scale's better than uh, Bull Whip. This is a game where I will go BKB after the Radiance, just because you saw how long I get stunned for. So it's not... Uh, it's not, like, worth prolonging my BKB. Even if it's just to help me farm more, because I can farm more aggressively on the map, because they go on me like that and we can turn. Um, gonna TP top. Gonna resume what we were doing. We see Spectre bottom. We don't have ult, though, so we do need to be a bit more defensive. Uh, pretty much wait till these creeps come into us here. We have Radiance now. Still a decent timing, 20 minutes with Armlet. Gonna be more defensive since most of them are missing. The lion, I think the Lion and the Underlord is enough to kill me, so we're just gonna summon our Skeletons to make a little space for us, similar to an Illusion Hero, using his Illusions. We're gonna go probably BKB Silver Edge here. Seems like the build. Oh, Underlord's here. We don't want to fight though, so we see that and we're gonna run away from him. We have good wards here to tell us where they are. I'm gonna back off early. I'm supposed to have like a triangle to farm here. Once again, Enigma's just griefing me. And these type of spots, uh, there's really nowhere else for me to farm. So you just kind of have to accept that your teammates are fucking you. Um, and not in the way you want them to. We're gonna buy a wand in case we get into fights now. Because we're, we're, we're willing to fight, but we don't want to. So we want the wand because they have lion. We could just go shard, but I think that's a bit of an overreaction. Might cost us, though. Make sure we get this double ancient. Don't listen to people like this uh, This uh, AA. Get your camps, be efficient, and then work your way out on the map. Especially when you have people like this Enigma that are effectively applying negative pressure on the game. But we're willing to punish this guy. I don't know what he's doing. And this guy's nuts. Oh my god, he actually got out. What the fuck? I thought he was dead for sure. I guess he had hood on or something. Okay. Our team is needlessly chasing, so I'm going to TP mid. Might actually need a shard. That mana drain hurts. Just bully this guy, because there's no way they rotated this quickly. And then we walk off, because by the time we've bullied him a bit, the enemy team could be here. Notice how we just forced a little reaction there. Knowing they're limited by how long it takes them to get from place to place. We see them all top. We see them reacting towards mid, so we're going to walk our way bottom. Our team wants to pressure top, but we're going to do a whole create pressure bottom scenario. And then we're going to... Um, join our team afterwards. We're in no rush. We don't want to just ram our faces into them. That's not how we win the game. Against heroes like Underlord. Really hard to push into them. But we just do this. And then we go back towards our side of the map. By my 
Like, all this area that I'm supposed to be efficient is just not possible because of my teammates. And that's fine. That's life. Uh, I think I'm gonna go shard. I don't want to die stupidly this game. Gonna make sure we push mid. Bottom lane's pushed out. See Spectre, but that doesn't really tell us much. Line has blink. That's a little bit scary. Our, our team's literally creating negative pressure. So, that's kind of just how it goes. Gonna make sure we get as much farm as we can. The swing where you force them top like we did, then you TP mid, farm your way to bottom, then make your way back top. This is like a very normal pattern you can get used to when you're not looking to fight the opponent directly. Notice how they're mid again, so we're gonna kind of rinse and repeat this. It is out of efficiencing them, even if you don't realize it. I'm supposed to be getting more creeps off of it because of the fact that my team's not supposed to be taking my farm. But uh, just gonna summon our skeletons to pressure that lane. New camps are spawning in 10 seconds. We have the shard now. So we're daring guaranteed to get our reincarn off. We're going to walk back towards mid because nobody's pushing that. And we, like I said, we're forcing reactions. Notice how there's consistently three heroes dealing with what we're doing. We'll take this invis rune and run at this guy real quick. We're supposed to get this farm too, but Enigma's really content on having more gold. So, you know, that's fine. I'm just recognizing that we can't fight them because I don't have a five. I literally don't have a support. So, notice my farming pattern. Pretty consistent when you don't want to fight them. You run towards their side of the map because you just saw them all top. We run at the Spectre with the SF. Spectre appears to see us based on his movements here. So, go ahead and pick these. It's pretty good pressure though. Spectre's forced to back off. He's not farming. We are farming. We're going to make our way back towards mid. Enemy's missing, so we're not going to walk up to this like a dumbass. We're just going to do that. Yep, there they all are. Very cool. Recognize the threat that the mid lane poses to you guys, please. It's a very dangerous lane to farm. Uh, I think I still want to go BKB, because I feel like I'm pretty useless in fights. What's going on here? Why is this ultimate happening? Okay, now they have no Spectre Haunt, so I kind of want to go. I mean, I'm definitely defending my tower at the very least. God. Gonna be more aggressive when pushing the lane, if anything. See the lion bottom, so we can focus more on, like, being away from their team. Um, I'm now being away from their team, even though they haunted, because we used Dark Ascension. So I'd rather do, like, the split push pressure game than just run into them. So, I'm just going to keep doing that. You can almost always take favorable engagements on Wraith King because of the nature of your skeletons. So there's no reason to force, like, a 5-on-5. Five five, unless, like, you think you're way stronger than they are. And since we haven't hit our BKB yet... But they're under vision here, so... They're under vision. I'm down to... Be a distraction for the support in the back. Should pretty much one shot this guy. Very nice. This is a good fight for us. Almost always top and mid will be good fights. So I'm gonna go ahead and force those. Notice I haven't really fought for the last like 15 minutes. Yeah, this guy's probably up. Okay, we're gonna go push lanes off of that. Very cool. Letting the fights kind of come to us where we know they will be good. Looks like our Enigma TP'd bottom, so we're getting nothing off of this. We're just gonna go triangle. Actually, no. Since we can farm right now, they're dead. We want to farm their jungle and then work our way backwards. So farm the most dangerous farm while they're dead. Oh, Underlord wants the dick, huh? Hmm. Didn't think he would try to do this. Looks like he has vision of me here. Looks like they see me here. I might be dead, actually. No arm to toggle. It's really hard to focus on this stuff when I'm... Did I take the skeletons down or what? How do there so many skeletons? Are they actually chasing me? What the fuck? Okay. 
Yeah, I gotta focus on our little toggling here. Jesus Christ. Okay, these guys are actually insane. So they 100% have wards there. I know that now. Glad I bought this Ogre Club. Shard creates more skellies? Oh! I didn't know that actually. Holy shit. Actually, a really nice item on Wraith King because it's like kind of goes with your like cooldown of your crits. We need our PKB. Notice how we can't really play fights without our PKB. So in these type of games, you identify what's making it so you can't fight, and then you uh, aim for that timing as soon as possible, taking only like really favorable engagements, and then you fight. We have our BKB now, we're gonna summon Skellies here and walk away. Pretty standard stuff in the dead lane, nothing crazy. We're gonna walk ourselves towards mid. We're willing to fight now. We'll be a bit more aggressive with our positioning on the map. Looks like he has a Deso. Lion's getting gone on, I'm actually walking in, fuck it. Okay. Take the movement speed. I believe these are the talents you take most of the time. Uh, don't really want to push this tower, but we can create some pressure by doing this. I mean, notice how like they're not accomplishing anything. They're actually losing their tower in the meantime. And our SF's going. Rubik has his ult. We can turn this into some tower pressure. Gonna stun here. Stun, stun, stun. Eh. We'll save our BKB here. Lion's alive. Hmm. Hmm, I don't think I get perma stunned here, but maybe I do. Kind of baiting him a little bit here. Probably kill this lion and get out. Okay. We'll go for Silver Edge against Spectre. It's really nice against Underlord as well. Mid lane's already getting pushed, so we don't have to concern ourselves with that. Just gonna be efficient in the meantime, summon these skellies. They should be able to kill that camp in time, I think. Maybe not. I may have needed to hit that one time. I wanted to stack this, though. Spectre bought back there, so that fight was, like, really good for us. I don't know why my team keeps asking for Enchant to Quiver. It's actually, like, really fucking good on or anything. Pushing out the dead lane while the Spectre's dead, taking all the dangerous farm, being hyper-efficient. We're gonna run at this guy since his team's dead for now. Okay, now we're gonna back off. Oh, might be in some trouble. Maybe they won't know we have a Shadow Blader. Very nice. Invincibility blade here. Spectre was dead with no haunts, so there's just no way. I think we can do Rush. Force two people bottom. They have no haunts for a bit. I'm gonna call out the Roche. If my team shows up, that's great. Normally, when I'm against lineups that fight really well as five, I force them to go bottom like this, and then I go Roche. Be standard. Looks like they know. Let our SF have it, because we're a Wraith King. 
Free Rush. We're gonna get our health back. Wait, what? Whatever. It is Enigma thinks he's the carry, I guess. Would really have loved to farm those Ancients, but looks like I don't get to. Arcane Link Enigma. So, before we just march down a lane, we need to get the lanes to be good. Uh, looks like SF TP bottom, so never mind about that. We need to run towards bottom, though, because we can't just let our SF with no Aegis be alone bottom at this stage in the game. So we're going to farm our way there. Looks like he's trying to hit his Abyssal Blade time. Play around our SF, be more of like a gank tank. If they were going to gank SF, it'd be from this route, so we just need him not to feed. And since we're a hero that is capable of gank tanking, we don't mind doing it. Gonna do a little bit of scouting ahead. Maybe one of their team is stupid enough to be here. Nope. Yeah. Other lanes are good. Somebody was supposed to have pushed mid, but I see Void Spear mid, so I'm walking up to the fucking triangle. A is getting gone on. We're gonna summon some skellies. Not gonna trade here though. We're just gonna TP mid in front of these fucks. Skeletons will do the job for us. Yeah, that guy's TPing out. Okay. Notice how whenever you can't fight them directly, it's all about that ex like that other pressure you create. It's been consistent throughout this entire game. We force them to go somewhere on heroes like Lion, so he's bottom. And then we just kill the guys that are overextending mid. That's what the game's all about. When you can't just run at them and fight them the way you want, this is how you create the favorable engagements and what Wraith King does really well, because the skeletons can just kill the building for you. Uh, their mid laner's dead for 50, but pushing directly into Underlord is quite difficult. But he just gave Rubik Black Hole, so we're going to go ahead and back off. Rubik has hole. I'm going to go ahead and back off now. Don't worry, this Enigma is just trying to make the game interesting. So we have Silver Edge. I'm gonna go kill the lane. Hopefully SF does not TP here. I feel like this is the game where he will. Please don't grief me, SF. Please don't grief me. Please don't grief me. Nice. So, in this case, they're all missing. We don't want to fight. I'm gonna do this. Rinse and repeat, boys. Rinse and repeat. So the skeletons will do what we're supposed to do when this is happening, so we can be efficient on Wraith King. Uh, we can probably go on the Spectre. I have Silver Edge. I should have beat the beat, I knew it. And just do this. I should have beat to kill the Spectre. I thought about it ahead of time, elected not to, and uh, regretted it. Against Lion, if you're going to use your BKB, it's got to be preemptive, so just how it goes. I'm going to go ahead and summon these to kill that, then we get to kill this, make sure we kill it before 37, 37 minute neutrals are coming out, don't grief me skeletons. Don't fucking grief me dogs. Ah, uh, leveler's okay. I took the Reincarnation Talent just because um, we're not really hitting people very much. We're more of like a damage soak in this game than we are a damage dealer. They just have too many disables for us to reliably hit people. Hold on to the leveler for base push, but uh, Minotaur Horn in fights is better. It gives us strength as well, so... 
don't know if you've seen this move before, guys, but I'm going to go ahead and summon my skellies and then walk away. They're towards our team. Keeping top to deal with Spectre. That's real. Okay. I think we can chase this guy, actually. At the very least, we're losing nothing by chasing this guy. Nice. Cool. Once again, forcing them to TP bottom, then getting a good kill top. That's the benefit of Wraith King. It really is the best part of the hero. Is your skeletons are like basically a hero in and of themselves when it comes to land pressure and split push. So you can effectively be two places at once when you play the game this way. Our team's supposed to be able to capitalize on this kill, but my SF's back there. Be a little bit careful here. He's got Arcane Blink. We'll force the other lane. Pushing into Underlord directly is just not good. Should be able to just walk away from this. I might have to do it, I'm annoyed, but it's fine. Didn't want to have to be Gibby there, but okay, he bought back. Run. Ulti's up in 25. Yeah, okay. Enemy team's alive. Spectre's going to be alive with Haunt. We're not going to be stupid. We don't have BKB, so we're just going to back off. Set up our skeletons to be released down a lane. At this stage in the game, it becomes more and more important for that. Earlier on, you just want to use them to like get as much GPM as possible. But right now, this is how you use skeletons. We have 6,000 gold. Too busy talking to you guys. Uh, probably just Abyssal. Give myself some uh, field threat on these supports. Why did Enigma use his last black hole on, actually? Is that how they killed Void? We'll save the wand for later, just in case. Okay, our Night Stalker's getting gone on. He does have BKB. He's gonna use it, okay. We really want to use our Skellies here before we go. Gets Enigma wants to farm with me. Okay, cool. All of this is just us rotating around the map faster than they do and eventually catching them with their pants down. And this is exactly how you have to play games like this. And it's the best part about Wraith King. I don't know if I mentioned that part. So, Underlord, super annoying. Always good to push two lanes at once against heroes like this that are super annoying. Tinker, Underlord. So, let your team push mid, you go bottom here. Probably could put my leveler in. Eh, I'd actually say the Minotaur one's better. Notice how we're enabling our team to push mid, because Underlord's forced to go bottom. Easy armor toggles. Good practice here. Hog, BSA Pro player. Okay, I'm gonna go ahead and walk to the left. Spectre's alive, we're gonna back off a bit. No detection on that guy. Maybe I could have actually fucking killed him, honestly. Prefer to light seal a bit back, though. Roche should be up. I'm gonna play for Roche, but they have no haunts, so I wanna, like, camp the high ground a bit. They might be stupid and walk out of their base. Give them, always give them a chance to be stupid if there's creeps for you to hit. This guy's got a glimmer cape. 
See if they're stupid guys. Okay. Well, we can always bank on Enigma being stupid. Rush also isn't up yet. Probably just go Ags. Spectre's going Abyssal. Oh, uh, Skelly's. Yeah, ignore that guy. Hit those creeps. Good job. Huh. I don't think this works. They don't have haunt. Like, I'm not afraid here. Very confused what's going on here. Very fascinating gameplay coming out from the Dire Squad here. Okay. Yeah. It's important at this stage in the game to recognize when you're not killable. So. No haunts. Spectre's bottom. They can't kill me. Okay, now that they're three dead, we can walk up. I wasn't gonna walk up, but, uh... The skeletons would follow us. I guess there's a creep camp there. Oh my god, my skeletons are prepared. Look at this. Okay, of course, the fort? That's actually pretty big. I'm gonna back off now. And, uh... Dude, my skeletons, man. GG. This guy's literally stunned for an hour. Okay, well, he's dead. So I think the emphasis that you guys can learn a lot from, not only on Wraith King, but in this game in general, is that uh, there's times where your teammates are going to take your farm. You kind of just have to accept it, play the game pretty, uh, like, disciplined. You're just going to have less GPM, but it's not like you're being inefficient. Your teammates are just kind of taking it from you, and that's life. And uh, being very picky about your fights. Notice how I never once tried to, like, ram my face into five heroes. I purposely forced somebody to go bottom. I purposely, like, forced a reaction of some sort before. And usually, since, uh, I'm, you know, playing the map objectively, and I'm not, like, weak, but I don't want to fight them five on five, it's usually going to be that I'm forcing the lane bottom and then taking the objective, like, Roche or Tier 2 top or, like, the fight that we took right here. It's all about, like, if I'm, like, really weak, I'll probably have to end up playing top in order to, like, get a tower bottom. Because, like, that's where I don't want to play. So it's, like, something where you can think about based on your strength, their strength, based on who's winning and all that kind of stuff. Which side of the map you're supposed to play. And, uh... Yeah. Hope you guys learned something from that game. I don't, uh... I don't know. It seemed like a good game to learn from. If you liked this video, please like, comment, subscribe to the YouTube channel, all that shenanigans, because at the end of the day, YouTube does care about that. You may not care about it, I may not care about it, but the YouTube algorithm does. So, please do.